This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by our Amazon Influencer Shop. Go to SewHere.com slash Amazon to shop all of our sewing recommendations. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm Dee Dee Donahue. And we just got out of our house for the first time. Well, you got out of the house earlier. Before you did, yeah. <laughs> well, we won't talk about how many times I got stuck in a snowbank after I got out of the yeah. house. In my own driveway, yeah. We're in the middle of snow MG. Yeah. That's what I've I've seen that instead of snow apocalypse. Oh, they don't what does snow and G mean? Like, like instead of OMG, it's oh, snow, snow MG. Oh, I get it. I thought snowmageddon. Okay. Snowmageddon, snow right. apocalypse. Snowtropolis, I think, too. We're in, oh. Yeah, I can think of some. Snowtropolis. But, but what I want to bring up about, because we're in January at the beginning of a uh-huh. new year uh, recording this, and I just want to bring up something that I've, dis- I've, I've discovered I'm thankful for. Okay. So I, <laughs> in, in, in the... You know, media, Facebook in particular, it's saying, you know, post a picture that f- 10 years apart or post oh. post your picture 10 years ago from your uh, profile picture and post the one now. I, I've seen it in a couple different sure. versions. All I want to say is I am grateful for improved cameras. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's like no, fuzzy, fuzzy, like, wuzzy. <laughs> how did aging hit you? Uh, you can't iPhones, tell. <laughs> iPhones got a lot better at taking pictures. That's right. That's I happened. mean, I look a lot better now than I did in that fuzzy picture, you know, I 10 years ago. I want to tell everyone that when texting first became a thing, that ZD was, like, kind of against it. I was. I thought, another thing to bother me. That's what like, I thought. I don't want to add this to our plan, da, da, da. And now ZD is, like, the most prolific texter. Okay, if I text someone <laughs> and then they call me back, I am pissed. <laughs> like, if I sent a text, I want to text to returns. It means I don't want to talk to your face that's, right now. Hello. I just want to say that that's something people criticize millennials about. They're like, millennials don't know how to talk on the phone. I mean, I do know how to talk on the phone. You do know how to talk on the phone. But I'm just saying... That anyone of any age sometimes okay. doesn't want to talk so on the phone. when I say, what do you want to, from the grocery store, and you call me back and give me a list while yeah. I'm driving, what the? <laughs> let's, okay, let's get real here. <laughs> Text that to me. Okay. Well, the other thing about texting is nobody can, like, you can be misinterpreted what you said, but someone can't say you said something ZD likes, other than what you did. ZD likes having a record. Yep. That's. That's for sure. That's right. No, documentation, that's documentation. Documentation. That's right. Okay. Anyway, so, I am thankful for the improved cameras. Okay. That take beautiful pictures of you sewing too, right? Well, honestly, right now, it's everything. I'm to segue. I'm the world to segue. is so much clear. On a clear day, you can see forever. Okay. You know? All right. <laughs> okay. We're t- talking today about using patterns for alternate purposes or unintended purposes. And I think. Or when it says, this is supposed to be your wedding dress. Right, could it be something it could else. It be something else. I think this is something that's really useful for stitchers of all levels, but maybe especially beginners. They think I have to buy a new pattern for yes X Y Z. Yeah, you don't have to buy a new pattern for a straight dress. You know, an A-line dress, say, because this one's in a floral print. <laughs> and there this you one's, go. Yeah, and this one, and this one is in a solid <laughs> with three buttons tacked on the front of it. Those are the same thing. There you go. Uh, and imagining, we are going to talk a little bit, like, I think about costuming here. But, right. yes, so I think this is just open up your mind a little bit. I'd love to hear if you have done anything like this, because we're going to just cover a few oh, examples. Never. I've never done it. No, we don't no, have no. a podcast. I mean, oh, I mean, I'm talking to them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pointing at my computer. <laughs> I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm, imagine Mallory coming out of your phone at you. No, I'd love to hear from other people um, who are listening to the podcast and have used a pattern for an unintended or alternate purpose because we're going to talk about a few here but i'm sure that there are more um out there in the world all right ziti what's our first one well i just the most recent thing i just happened yeah. to think about the top of my head is we just got out of making halloween costumes okay yeah we just finished that little uh 
episode of our life, which will reoccur. Um, <laughs> if and, we're thinking that we just got right. finished with it in January, it's like half of our lives are and, taken. And Mallory, had <laughs> said, Mallory actually texted me, mind you, and said, I want to make Zelda Lightning McQueen, and I, what I want to do is make her this little bomber jacket. I think I need to buy a pattern. I don't want to draft one, right? Like That is th- what I said. So, yes. So Lightning McQueen. And because you texted it, I haven't talked about it. That's right. right. So Lightning McQueen is the race car from Cars. And I was like, I'm not going to like build her a cardboard race car to like walk around in. I Especially thought, since she's only like two feet tall. Right. right. And I, I thought to myself at first, I want to make a jumpsuit. She's going to look like a racing person, like a team a member. A pit member, yeah. I thought that I was being so smart, but that's actually what all of the Lightning McQueen costumes are online. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to say I came up with it independently. But then I was like, oh, going to the bathroom might be hard in like a jumpsuit. Right. Right. So then I thought two-piece outfit right. would be perfect. So I said, I, I said, I think we have an old pattern and um, let me find it. Right now, Mallory's plan, and I also said, "What fabric are you going to use somewhere in this yeah. texting?" And she said, "I want to use, you know, that lycra, the one you've got, the shiny stuff, but I need red." Or, you know, she she started kind of telling me what she needed, and I said, "I think we have all that." Right. So this is how this came about, and I think we actually talked about it in another podcast. We did a little. So bit. I found a pattern. Mm-hmm. Now it was a, a tell it, us it was about a the two ta- yeah. two toddler. Like hooded car coat, I yeah. believe. Okay, to be made out of a woven fabric. What's a car coat? A car. Oh my gosh, that's an old term. That's from the. Yeah. That's a mid-century term, I tell, believe. Tell us about that. Okay. I don't know. I think it's a mid-century term, and I think it came from. You no long no longer wore a long coat. Because you were getting in and out of your car. Uh-huh. So this is more like a jacket, but heavier than a jacket, uh-huh. right? And it got sort of called a car coat because it was a coat that facilitated you getting in and out of the car. And you didn't need a long coat to your knees because you would be, you know, yeah. protected in your car. So I use that term, I guess, since I was a kid. Yeah. You know, and your mother might say, get your coat. And to me, that would be like the long uh-huh. Dress coat or get your car coat. And your car coat was not as um, not as long, not as not as long, and not as um, what do I want to say? Um, I'm I'm searching for a word here. I don't know. Protective, as formal, don't, not as formal. Formal, formal. Okay. formal. Okay. It's more like okay. you know. So it was the bomber jacket of those days or yeah. something. Okay, and so now, or the hoodie of those days because it also had a hood on it. Okay, let's talk about usually. the term bomber jacket. Yeah, now that's getting thrown around. Nowadays, yeah. uh, I think it's okay, but I think that some patterns are being called bomber jackets. Yeah, and I so mean, to me, not a bomber, really a bomber the, jacket. the term bomber jacket, uh huh, I believe came from like World War II pilots. from pilots. Bombers, yeah. And what they had is they had a leather jacket, uh-huh. yet it might have like a knit cuff, yes. or a tighter cuff, yes. right? To, for, so it was close to the skin, like around the. Uh, the cuff, the wrist, the, the wrist, yeah. and around the bottom of it, so it it stayed down. So right? bomber jackets nowadays, they're like knit and it bomber. was and it was zippered. Yeah, and yeah. Th- there were lots of pockets on it too. Yes, so it was yes. often leather. Yeah. So nowadays we got these bomber jackets that are you know quote bomber jackets that are made from like sequin fabric. That's and, right. Um, Kim, bomber jacket is more or less become a term for the shape yes. and not the utility of yeah. it, right? So Kim Shear, uh, who is a member of the group, she t- she does these awesome sequin bomber, bomber jackets. jackets. I want to okay, make myself one. what's not awesome in sequins? And it's the flippy, Excuse- it's except- the flippy sequins, yeah. too. It's yeah. not just any yeah. sequins. Yeah. I want, like, a, one of the mermaidy colors. I wish I could figure out. I, I need to invent something where you can put sequins on your butt right the back of your garment and you can sit down and it doesn't create a problem i just remembered last night i had a dream that sequins were created like through fermentation because (laughs) i'm fermenting all this stuff (laughs) i'm like i'm working on getting a kombucha scoby right now i think i just have to hold on i think that that is like brain cross training (laughs) okay i i have to tell you that we yeah it was like the sequins would float on top of the stuff and it was like they were on strings okay i just have to say that anyway i gotta figure (laughs) out how to get sequins and pearls like on your butt so you can sit on them and they don't bother your butt and they don't stick to the chair or like i don't know about that mom because i know know. there's got to be a way you want to sparkle Maybe you need a flap. 
You just need <laughs> yeah, classic. I don't know. You flip up. I, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we use this woven jacket pattern. Right. Didn't have a band on it. Didn't have a band on the cuff, right? It, I, uh-huh. I think it was just him. It's supposed to be elasticated. Oh, but was not it? A band, okay, I don't not remember that. Okay, okay, I, I remember that. It was like they, the baby yeah. would look like okay. a little puffball. Not only what? Okay, now think about this pattern. I had made this pattern for some child before I had children, and my oldest child is thirty-eight years old. So that's how old the pattern. God, is. she's so old. Okay, <laughs> so the pattern, you know, is well, you know. Back, it, it, it's old. It's 40 years old, probably. But uh-huh. I have kept it and used it over and over. And we could tell that by the way it looked. It was, it, it's pretty used. Yeah, yeah. No, it was. Yeah. Uh, new- and I do remember making car coats for Hillary. Yeah. Okay. Because I couldn't find what I wanted. And I was like, well, why don't I make one? You know. And she's so old. No, right. Okay. So the pattern was really old. So we used, we, um, I made it out of a knit. Okay. This was a 2T pattern. And my which arbitrarily means nothing. To right? Me. Who yeah. the hell knows? Um, it, and, which is arbitrary. And when, when that was published, you know, what did that mean then, and what does it mean now, and da 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 da. Oh, I didn't mean two T then either. I can yeah. tell you that. So, not, not for my kids. Yeah, I I think this happens for a lot of kids. I mean, I have kind of a big baby right now, but like I just hear this complaint so much that. That patterns for little kids I seem really big. Seem big. I don't no, know. I, Whatever. I think they. And I'm I'm sure that maybe. I don't. It, I'm sure what it is is there's one two 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 yeah. toddler out there that that pattern fits. And yeah, I don't mean to be offensive if your child is big enough to fit in these, but uh, no, because you know. maybe they're more normal yeah, than maybe normal. children. So more. Zelda is three and a half basically uh, on Halloween, and this jacket was very large on her. But I used a knit, um, used lycra right. instead of a woven. We what did we do to make this not look like a car coat? Hello, we used shiny lycra. Right. We used shiny sequined lycra and put yep. racing stripes on it. I appliqued Lightning Queen's logo on it, and we also added eyes on the front to make it look like Lightning McQueen. So just lots right. of applique. Right, we, we, we applique it, and and the big thing was is I believe the band. You know, we put a band that gathered up. Uh huh. The ease of it, right? Right. Where it went around her little hips, and you know that's really funny because they are really little. Yeah, hips. she's just little. They aren't really right now. She's a cylinder. She's yeah. like the same measurement, you know, bre- from breast, waist, hips. They're all the same measurement. Nineteen, nineteen, nineteen. Right. Uh. So. And we we also put a band at the at the sleeve at like the cuff. that. Mm-hmm. So the cuff. make sure when you are you might need to buy a pattern, of course, if you only own like. A few patterns, and you're starting out. Well, I think, but I also think that this is a lesson, too. When you're looking at those patterns, you can look how they're constructed and think, ooh, I could use this for this. I could use this for that. Okay, so if there's a pattern without a cuff. Right. Well, I can put a cuff on. You can. I can can look up ZD and Mallory's um, on their YouTube channel. I bet I know how to put a cuff on here. That's right. So Um, don't be afraid to add Elements like that, especially right. that don't affect like I, the overall drafting, right? We just had a post in your Facebook group that said It's my Facebook group. It says by Mallory <laughs> it does Donahue. Say Mallory it does say by Mallory Donahue. <laughs> but anyway, um that's all right. What what's yours is mine. <laughs> but anyway, um it said I have all this fleece. Has anybody ever made a fleece dress? I've made there this fleece shirt uh-huh. and somebody Intuitively, I'm right. sure, said, lengthen the, the shirt. shirt because a dress is a nowadays is a shirt lengthened. Sometimes, right? Yeah, certain dresses. If it's dresses. if it's straight or you know yeah. whatever, I mean, you can even make a flared bottom on it if you know how to do it. And I understand we may be speaking of some things that are like out of the realm of someone who's sure. just started. Or, sure. But you know there are resources and there are Facebook groups like the Self Sewn Wardrobe. Mm-hmm. That can you can say I want to make this. I like this whole top. Is there something I can do with the bottom of it? Right. Yeah. So look at that. Don't be afraid to add certain things. Maybe you want a different number of buttons on something. Oh yeah, that's I, really when you funny. said the three button thing. I thought, oh, I've seen posts before where there was like a button up shirt, but instead of having sort of the traditional, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, button distribution right. and size, they were like larger, and I thought, okay. You might have to take a few things into account here, but you can change the number of buttons that appear 
on the shirt. You know, you that's do it. So was I when I was in <clears throat> junior high and high school. Uh-huh. So when I started sewing was like, you know, I was like going. I think I was in junior high when I got my sewing machine. I was thirteen, and there were there was this store called The Villager. Uh huh. And everybody wanted to buy their clothes from the villager. Yeah. Okay. And they had a one line of um, clothing was called the ladybug, and a little ladybug pin came on all their clothes. But they were these little cotton shirtwaist dress. There was a shirtwaist dress, basically, and then there was like an A line princess line dress. Uh huh. And they were made out of like different calico prints or solids, and they were just adorned in different. There was really only two dresses. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, th- now they did have like a dirndl skirt, if anybody knows what that is, on this one um, shirtwaist dress. Okay. Okay. So I would go to the store. And mind you, I had to take a picture of these in my mind. I didn't have, you a, didn't phone. have a cell phone. Didn't have my cell phone. And I would make all these dresses. And then I would make my own version of all these dresses. Right. Okay. I would add Rick Rack. I would have a collar and I would add Rick Rack to the and baby Rick Rack was really cute then. Mm-hmm. Um it's still I, cute. I would add a button. I would make a flower dress with Rick Rick Rack. Uh-huh. I would make a flower dress with nothing on it. I also made a solid dress and took the a piece of fabric into the alterations department at what was called Sticks Baron Fuller, a department store, where they embroidered the initials into people's fur coats uh-huh. and asked them if they could put a monogram on this piece of fabric. Uh-huh. And I did, and I made a dress with my monogram front and center on my chest. And believe me, every teacher in my school wanted my dress. <laughs> but Okay, so mm-hmm. I had two patterns. I had and you this made A-line pattern, versions. and I had the shirt waist that mm-hmm. I made all the – sleeveless, not sleeveless. You know, I mean, just yes. – I cannot go on and on and on about what I uh, – adornment at the hem and no place else. Like, right. just, just these little nifty I – would, I would lay in bed and think this stuff up and draw little pictures. Yeah, you know? I actually have a problem where I'm like, okay – I probably don't need 20 shirtwaist dresses. Which one should I make? Well, <laughs> my, so pro- my problem was, how can I... How can you buy what, all the fabric? Or <laughs> How can I make all these as fast as I can? Yeah. And I could make three dresses in a weekend easy, right. you know. But uh, And that was cutting out with scissors, you know. Uh, so, I, you know, I had this humongous wardrobe. And so many people didn't know I sewed. They really right, thought, that like, I was hitting... You know the villager, right? And buying my. In fact, they would say I couldn't find that at the uh, villager, and I'd say, "Well, um, I made it." This is the original. But when people say they don't have an idea, I always think sometimes I wish I had that problem because yeah. I feel like I have too many sometimes. Okay, so what's another? Let's do one more before we take a message break. Okay. Here. Um, I, I will stick with Halloween here, even though I went back into my childhood there for a while. Um, is you. Like a base pattern, so yes, and and this is not even Halloween. This is costuming in general. I can't tell you how many things I've made, like just from like a scrub pattern or a pajama pant pattern. I made Lindsay the Tin Man out of a little, you know. I would not have scrub thought... pattern because it's pants and it's a top. Yeah. And what did I have to do? Well, I made it out of lame for one thing. The scrub you know. scrub patterns are good because if you think about scrubs. Like a classic scrub. Right. Of course, they make like all these cool ones nowadays. It's a woven shirt. That, that's right. With a no, boxy woven shirt. With no closures. Yep. Right? Yep. So so that means that it's fast for one to construct. Right. Okay. And then it's those pants with a drawstring or Which elasticated Which is basically lace. a pajama pant. That's right. So if you're someone who's new to sewing and you're intimidated by knits. Right. Or you're going to say to someone who's helping you. Right. Or whatever a kid's making it and you don't want to deal with knits that scrub top's going to fit without you having to put in like a zipper right. or buttons or buttonholes well That's... i just think about i she was actually in the wizard of oz yes. the play yes and everybody was like you know i remember the director saying well you know you'll have to construct a costume you know I, she said, i don't know if you want to make it out of cardboard or what and the whole time i'm thinking i saw some silver lame <laughs> i saw some silver lame. you know and i thought I'm not even going to ask her because I don't think she'll get my she'll idea. Yeah. And I am just going to go make this, you know, this is a little neighborhood thing that yeah, we did. Yeah, it wasn't like mom was being paid to make No, no, costumes. no. We all had to make our own children's <laughs> yes, costumes. Yes. You know? So um, 
I made this little scrub outfit out of lame, and I took this lame and covered the funnel for her head, you yeah. know, and, and, and all this, and made the axe, and I covered the head of the axe with the lame. Okay, this kid was going to stick out, right? <laughs> Honestly, when she came onto the stage, people went, oh! <gasps> Because it, it was so very cute. Effective. It was very effective. Yeah. And you know what? She could move. She didn't have to worry about having a box around her body. She wasn't very big. She was only like, you know, eight years old. Like, right. And she was tiny anyway. So the thought of me putting like a box on her and her having to speak you know, lines and sing a song, I right. didn't think it would. I thought it would be difficult for her to okay. handle. And this is where I'm going to bring in Team Trace. Okay, uh -huh. so if you own a scrubs pattern or like yep. a PJ, you know, yep. woven top pattern for like kids and adults, right? Or you know, men, women, children, or whatever, um, that's a place where I would definitely recommend tracing the size off. So I should add, so tracing would tracing be more difficult, or would it be more difficult to have to go get in your car and go buy the pattern, or right. get online and buy the pattern again and wait for it to come? You know. Yeah, a lot of people say, um, okay, well, if I only have to pay one ninety nine for the pattern, I'll cut it. <clears throat> and I get, I kind you of get it. You have to store it. Right. So if the pattern's ever one ninety nine, I feel like I want to buy like five of them right then. And I have I done that, actually. Yeah, I don't want to wait right. until later. And then I'm like, but then I can't blend between sizes if right. I've cut it out. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, we've, right. this is another podcast um, but <laughs> that I think we've already recorded. Um, so anyway, uh, that is um, – that's another reason that you might want to trace some of these patterns well, that you think could be diverse. And another thing have diverse that uses. I saw you say – somebody posted it, mm -hmm. and you went, oh, why didn't I think of this? And I thought, how come you haven't seen it? Is you can sometimes – especially like on a scrub pattern, you can just fold – the seam allowance over and cut to the correct line. So, oh, so you, yeah. you yeah. on your folding, you know, mm -hmm. on your cutting line, on your your pattern. Sometimes you can just fold the pattern out of the way, and you know yes. where to cut. And yes. you don't you don't have to always trace or cut it. You cut the largest size, and then you can fold away right. the, the seam allowance, sizes. especially on something straight like yeah. that. And, you know, we have, like, the easy tee pattern where you can draft your own woven dolman shirt, right? right. Um, so it's not a set-in sleeve. But I just think about sometimes, you know, I don't want to draft a bunch of stuff for, like, other people. Well, that's what you said you know, about you it, didn't have to... Didn't you were telling me you didn't have time to draft. You also told me you didn't have time to go buy a pattern. And I said, I'm sure we've got right. one. And I do not have that many children's patterns. Mm -hmm. I'd say, okay, well, someone which, else which might to have me, a okay, I'm sorry. Of that. Me saying I don't have a lot of children's patterns <laughs> means maybe I have a dozen. Okay, maybe. I'm looking. I can see through that drawer. Kids' patterns. There's maternity patterns in that drawer too. Okay. Well, let's pretend mom has twenty kids' patterns. Okay. It's opposed to her hundreds and They've hundreds. They've been used <laughs> over and yes. over and over and over. Well, again. I'm just saying, not that many is a relative term. Okay. Moving it is. on. Moving on. Well. Okay. And you said we were going to take a break. So we are. I've got a whole bunch. I've got some real exciting stuff for okay, after the well, break. Okay. Well, let's take a break. But okay. yes. So those those woven tops or those simple things. A great thing to keep around because you'll be able to use them for lots of other stuff. Definitely would trace them in case you want to make different sizes. Okay. Uh, let's take a quick break, and I'm, I'm ready for these exciting things. This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by our Amazon Influencer Shop. That's right. All of our Amazon recommendations are in one place at SewHere.com slash Amazon. We've organized our store with lists like lingerie sewing supplies, pressing tools, sewing reference books, and we're adding more all the time. Do you have a request for a list of our recommendations? Let us know, and we'll put one together. When you purchase through our Amazon Influencer Store, Sew Here receives an affiliate commission at no extra cost to you. Help support the podcast while shopping our favorite items that make our sewing lives great. You can even tell your friends and family to shop from our store so that you get fabulous sewing goodies for the holidays. Go to SewHere.com slash Amazon to shop now. Sew, 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 sewing out loud. And we're back. All right. So, um, uh, talk about your first thing, which I can't even, we just. 
Okay. <laughs> I, I was just going to – so patterns. And I started drafting – yeah, oh. like drafting seriously. Now I remember. <laughs> okay, drafting seriously. I started doing that, I would say, in the early 90s. Okay. Now, I had drafted before, but I'm talking seriously, like to your body, to your, measuring someone, making slopers, this whole stuff. You were fitting, like drafting to fit, fit. Someone right, else, or I would or... draft just a sleeve okay. or something like that. But okay. I mean seriously, like from you know the ground up, I think I got really seriously serious in the early 90s. Okay. okay. And... um. But there would be things like, how do I make this collar that looks like this, and at what proportion, and how will I sew it on, or something. Collars are weird. Something like that, In right? my opinion. So I would sometimes go get a pattern and buy it just for the collar. Uh-huh. Okay? And I might even just be buying it for the instructions, Okay. Right. So I'll pay a dollar ninety nine for instructions. Right. Okay. At, at that time, I think we were buying them for ninety nine cents sometimes. Okay. Right. When they went on the sale, so that is sometimes how it may. If I could look at some, and here here's the deal: when you go to buy a pattern, you can open the envelope and you can take out the instructions and you can look at the instructions before you purchase it. You cannot unwrap yeah, the you know, pattern. Yeah, I remember the first time you said that. Yes. And I didn't know that because I've never had to buy a ton of patterns because we have because so I many have patterns, them all. right? Yes. Um, or we draft our own or we whatever, right. you know. Uh, anyway, so I think cool, so. Cool so tip. you can open up. And go, are these instructions valuable? Are these instructions what I expected them to be? Is this what I want to buy? Uh-huh. Okay, and, you know, fold them back up because they're easy to fold back up and stick them back in the envelope and go purchase this. Or not per- Yeah. do the same thing. Fold them back up neatly and put it back. Okay? Do You cannot unfold a pattern. Okay? You, ju- you can't do that. It, <laughs> it's not going to go back right. <laughs> the store's going to be mad at you. They will, you know. You, you'll be banned from you, Joanne's You will be brother. banned. <laughs> you know, you'll never get to come back again. What did they call it, Lindsay, when they banned? Trespassing. Yes. They called it trespass. You, you've been trespassed and cannot come back. Lindsay was a mall cop. When, that was when Lindsay was a mall They would trespass the kids that, you know, uh, shoplifted Stole or whatever. Stole candy and right. stuff, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you can do that. And I Still, till this day, we'll do that sometimes. Yeah. Like, I'll go or I'll go back to something I drafted and go, how did I do that? Because I almost forgot. Did I have to put ease here? Or did I have to do this? Or what? Here's the other thing. The proportion. Yes. That can really get you off. Well, and it's like, if I had all the time in the world, could I figure out all these proportions for this collar right. or this particular design element? Like, or I think of a cowl neck. Okay, somebody mm-hmm. just said, I love my Rhapsody, she but I, I have a right. cowl neck pattern. Should I slash and spread my Rhapsody, blah, 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 or should I just use the cowl from this pattern and pop it onto my Rhapsody. Exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah, we were like, oh, no. Frank or you may be doing you know. a combo of that yeah, somehow. Right. Yes. Yeah, and we were like, oh, don't. Yeah, I would It's called Franken-pattern. Yeah, Like Franken- Frankenstein, they took parts of different people and put together and made one one being. Well, you can do that with patterns. That's right. Um, and so, anyway, uh, we were like, yeah, put, right. put it together. What if you had a Rhapsody and you wanted to put, like, a polo collar on it? Okay, right. that's, oh, hello. I would totally use right. another, if I, I have I, one already. Right. I think of a lot of things that I did in, like, sh- for show choir. Yeah. You know, it was, or jazz choir, or whatever people call them, and what part of the, the country or wor- world, was sleeves. Sleeves, I think, oh, yeah. I need this big mutton sleeve. Yeah. You know, well, I've... Uh, I mean, I don't have to look for the paper. I don't have to look for the shape. I don't have to look for the... I, you know, I might buy a pattern with this big, huge, over-exaggerated mutton sleeve that, that might have been on a wedding dress pattern uh-huh. that I'm now using on a dress to make a different statement on stage. Yes. So using using bits and pieces right. of patterns, remember that. Because if you see, if you own that a-line dress. Oh, you know what? Amy, Amy, um, Amy, I know Amy. You know Amy. I said uh, somebody. Bah, 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 go, go. I know her. La- I don't want to say her last yeah, name. Okay. And I said Kim's last name earlier on the podcast, but she's like online as like a public. She should probably sue us. Her name is in her business name, so I don't oh, think okay. that that's so bad. Right. But anyway, Amy V. She said, "Oh, I have a princess line. Um, I think it was like Tilly in the buttons dress. 
that fits right. me perfectly. Right. She's like, is this my sloper? Might be her sloper. And I'm like, yeah, it is. That would be her sloper. Okay, you like the collar from, and then she was making a McCall's pattern, actually, one that I had made, and she was having a little trouble, like, with the sleeve and stuff, and I thought, oh, maybe she should just style this a bit differently, yeah. use the collar from that pattern or whatever, but, man, once you've got something that fits well, like that. Well, when, when I said I... In my use, I used yeah. those two patterns. Mm -hmm. They became my slopers. The first one, because I've always had the, you know, fuller bust issue. Fuller bust, yeah. Okay. You know, the first one was too big in the shoulders. Yeah. You know, and I wore it for a while and went, this is too big in the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Nobody else seems to care, but I get that this is too big. So the next time I trimmed it down, traced it and trimmed it down. What? Well, <laughs> and, you know, I used to trace, like, on shopping bags or anything. I can just remember. Yeah. And then my dad finally brought me home the end of a newspaper roll. Oh, yeah. So it was newsprint. Heaven. You know. And then I realized I could do it on um, uh, wrapping paper. You know, all these different ideas came, you know, at different times. I have been really frustrated with the width of tracing paper right now. Oh, the, you mean our the one we use? Yeah. yeah. For my leggings. Oh. Because my, you don't, you know, you don't normally have a pattern piece that I mean, not Juts normal. out. It's quite, it's a wide pattern piece. It's a piece. big pattern piece, a, yeah. My thigh is 23 or 25 inches or something like that. Yeah, well, mine's like 20 and it just fits. You, yeah, you yeah. just fit on right. there. And I have been, I have been a little frustrated with it well, lately. You only yeah. need that one little uh, point. But anyway. I know, it's just been <laughs> annoying. <laughs> well, just trying to complain. <laughs> you can go to the hardware store. Okay. And I will show you what you can buy. I can buy you can some. buy the paper they put down on the floor, you know, to protect oh. it. Now you can't see through it. That's the problem. The, well, but anyway, and it's heavier. But there's paper out there. That sounds nice. There is paper maybe, out there. Maybe we need to go a trip, see if we can get out of our driveway. So anyway. Okay, yeah, so using those so, patterns so for using, the it, Yeah, and like I said, sleeves was a big thing. And sometimes you'll see something that looks like a complicated, or, or uh, like the surplus. Surplice, surplice, yeah. The surplice and the twisted fronts and all those that people get like overwhelmed by. You know, I'm how going to call out Rachel on the twisted, yeah, like not how, yeah, <laughs> like how do, how do I make this? You can go look at the at the pattern and if those directions. And I, I'm telling you, don't just look at the directions and, and then think, well, I got this. No, go buy the pattern yeah. for two dollars <laughs> or whatever. Take it home and it's yours forever. It's your information forever. Yeah, and you've got that. You've got that technique or something. So I like. I like that. Okay, I'm gonna buy this wedding dress pattern for this leg of mutton sleeve, uh -huh. and I'm gonna use it to create some kind of costume or something like that. I think that's fabulous. Um, and then uh, the last sort of, uh, what do I want to say? Element of this is about ease and negative ease in different types of garments. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how you've got a pattern that you use all the time for one thing, right? Or, or you've, yeah. you've drafted or you've purchased. I'm just going to use a really specific thing. I just want right. to do this. Yeah. So, Because like, I have stories about this too. Yes. Yes. It's perfect. Let's talk about like a rash guard. So it's like a raglan sleeve. Okay. But, so what a, rash, just, what a rash guard is, yes. everyone, not everyone knows this. It's still kind of a new word for some people, is it is a swimming garment. So you wear it, and it usually covers a lot of your skin. It's called rash guard because surfers started using it when they would, like, jump up on their boards. They would get a rash, like, on their belly or their chest or their arms. So nowadays we wear them. We call them rash guards. We wear them for more than one thing. We wear them a lot for protection sun from the protection. sun. Okay. Yeah. But th they're not called sun protection <laughs> guards. They're called <laughs> rash guards. Or sun guards. They're called rash guards because that's sort of where they started. Okay, so it's a it's a raglan t shirt basically, right? Well it could be a set in sleeve. Sure. But the one that I use that I do yeah. Uh, ours, ours at our house here I'm seems to be the raglan because I feel like the raglan, that seam is more fitted, like it's a base, what we call a baseball shirt, we yeah. used to call it. You know, it, it gives you more movement in your arm. Yeah, so I just want people to be able to visualize. Let's visualize a raglan thing, right. you know, raglan, raglan shirt. Now, your rash guard, your swim top, you want that to fit real close to mm -hmm. you. So let's pretend you have... Because if it doesn't, air bubbles up in well, it. Well, air bubbles and it'll hang on. <laughs> and it hangs and, and it's all, it gets in your way. Swimwear is generally something you want to be a little closer Most fitting. Closing, very close fitting. Yes. The closest fitting. Yes. So if you have a raglan t-shirt that you've been wearing around, like to, you know, in public and stuff, that's not a 
piece of swimwear, you could possibly use your same pattern that you own. Let's pretend you own a pattern for this. And you could try sizing down, especially if you traced it and you didn't size cut. Down? Or? Size down to a rash guard. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going backwards. Uh, you're going, going the backwards. wrong way. I'm I going... was thinking you had the stretch guard well, and you were going to size hold up we'll to go, the everyday shirt. We'll go back. Okay. We'll, go, right. we'll, do, we'll right. use your example for that. <laughs> Our like... trains are running in different directions. Yeah. So so I'm saying you have a you have a shirt that you think, you know, you like to wear out in public. And I'm, of course, there are some people who love to wear, like, super tight clothing, and that's great. So if it's already tight, you don't have to worry about it. But if it's a little looser, like a traditional T-shirt, and then you want to go tighter for swimwear – you could try going down a size, making it out of swim fabric, and you might have your rash guard pattern already. Correct. You don't have to necessarily buy. It doesn't have to be in a pattern envelope that says rash guard. Now, Mary C., she has already hacked her Rhapsody into a raglan. Mary is a hacker. Mary <laughs> is very innovative. Okay, so, like, I mean... Mary, I won't judge you if you want to go buy some more raglan t-shirt patterns or anything. But, like, technically, I don't think Mary needs to ever buy another raglan. You know, does she want to make it looser uh, for a reason? Does she want to make it tighter for a reason? Well, Mary knows where her seams are, and she can take them up. Well, and you might, okay, you might not want to make it bigger in the shoulders. You like that fit. You like that that, that form fit to the shoulders, down maybe to the bust. And like an everyday t shirt, what I like is I like it fitting me up in the chest and then I like it freer. Little skimming, uh, right. Yeah. Like I sort of like it to hang from, you know, my chest. Yeah. And also, because I don't like it tight like over my pants or over my jeans right. or something. I don't like those so lumps showing. Let's talk about going backwards a little bit. Uh-huh. You drafted yourself a rash guard pattern. Right. That is very close fitting. Right. And then what did you do? Well, I've done everything. <laughs> so I have made, I ha- I, so I have made, you know, t shirts that I wear like, out in public, like not in the water. Uh huh. Although I've even been known to wear my rash guards as a shirt. But so then I just got really disappointed in like the night shirts and nightgowns that were out there. And I had this like thing about I want it to be this long and I want it to have three quarter length sleeves and I want it to be knit be- so that when I twist in the bed, it goes with me, right? Uh-huh. Or doesn't like twist on me. So I made myself three night shirts, which what I did, all I did was add fabric from like underneath the arm uh-huh. down. Yeah. I sort of A-lined them. Right. So well, plus I sometimes am on vacation and in hotel rooms and I also live very close to a son in law. So I am seen in my nightgowns. Like, you want them to be fit for somewhat public consumption. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I'm not in a negligee, okay? So I made myself three nightgowns, whip, whip, whip. In fact, I think I demoed the uh, cover stitch on a bunch of them. Uh You know, we have a video on that. So I actually had on one, like, one day. And what did my husband say? He goes, are you going out on the pond now? (laughs) Because it was like, you know, 730, Mm -hmm. getting kind of dark. And I was like. No. What? And he goes, well, you're wearing a rash guard. And I was like, he's totally confused because it's the same pattern. And some of them were the same fabrics. Like, I didn't use the same fabric combo. Right, right. But I actually had, like, one outfit made out of the sleeves. And, like, Mallory had another outfit made out of the body of the right. garment. So, like... The poor man doesn't know what my clothes are because they're no longer coated like it's confusing. Right. Like I use <laughs> I use double brush poly for everything. Yes, you know. Yes. And um So that yes. So just think about the sizing. You you chose a size. The the pattern maker had you choose a size based on your body measurements. And they, the style and utility yes. is how they drafted it. They drafted it adding ease or negative ease right. based on their vision, right? right. Uh, this is a close-fitting pattern. Someone with a 40-inch bust is actually going to make a garment that is only 38 inches around right. bust or whatever. Okay, so you don't know that. Right. Okay, you don't know unless they've disclosed this to you. Or, or you, you measure, measure the, the pattern. pattern. Yeah, or you measure the pattern. So if you're like, oh, well, I have rash guard pattern. I have discovered that my 
rash guard that I have rash made. guard pattern sounds like a disease. It does not. I have rash guard pattern. I have <laughs> doctor. A, look, I have this rash guard pattern. <laughs> I have this rash guard pattern. I've measured my pattern. I've discovered it's got ten percent negative ease. Let's measure the next two sizes up. Oh, it's exactly my right. bust size. That means there won't be a lot of stretching over my bust. This is maybe a little bit more nightgowny or right. normal t-shirt. Whatever you know, a or I or... won't be wearing a bra with this. I wonder how this will work out. There you go. Or yeah. I'm wearing it. Okay, when I wear my rash guard, I wear a rather compressive sports bra. Right. Or I wear a, you know, um, when I'm when I'm not wearing my compressive sports bra, I'm wearing my um, bra that supports a lot of forward projection. You well, know, or some people wear their bikini or their yeah. swimming suit under the rash guard. My what kind of bra I wear like definitely affects how my clothes fit oh, yeah. me. I mean, I don't know if anybody else is not in that boat, but, like, I guess I just have, like, lots of different types of bras. I wear certain underpants under certain pants, too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. We'll get to that next month. We'll talk about undergarments next month. Okay. All right. Well, I'd love to hear about, like, okay, I use this pattern for, you know, uh, Yeah, I want this, somebody I want, to tell me some, something really weird. Yeah, I'd love some like, examples. Like, really bizarre. Uh, give it to us. All right. Well, uh, you can get a hold of us at Mallory at SoHere.com. You can get to us on Instagram. We are at SoHere.com. And take it away, Mom. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.